Hey everyone. <clears throat> I hope I didn't come on here too late. Maybe somebody will get on here and chat with me. Um, I had a late dinner and I'm I'm a little bit late. I said I'd be on here at 1030, but one of my cats were out and I just heard a big old scream, so I had to go rescue her. <laughs> okay. I'll get to it. I don't know if it has something to do with Venus and the way the uh, this new Aquarius moon, but to be honest with you, I have never been very creative. <laughs> I mean, my herbs are my thing, and but as far as getting ideas on how to do things, I haven't ever really done that. So I'm pretty proud of myself on the new moon. I made my first witch's ladder after all these years. I made my first one and I wanted to show it to you. I had a bunch of apple sticks that I didn't know what to do with. They're they're mainly used in fairy magic. Um, they're considered to be bridges for the fairies to walk over into our realm. So... I decided to use them as my rungs on my ladder, and it's long. <laughs> I'll have to stand up here where you can see it. One. And it's not perfect by no means. And at the bottom, I have my one of my crystals wrapped in copper. And I have a sun, little sun thing. And of course, pinnacles and stars and um, a big moon. Or crescent moon. And I've had it hanging out on my front porch. But. It's already, my, my yarn's already starting to kind of, I guess it's so windy here that it's already starting to fray. So I may just hang it in my house, especially it being my first one. I'll make more. Um, it's not so easy to do with them sticks though. You need a drill. So you can drill holes in it to thread it, you know, through there. And I just realized I'm missing one of my eyebrows. Who cares? I've been cleaning and cooking and just decided to come on here and do this as I usually do. Now, my next thing I want to show you is my besom. Now, I have not decorated her. Um, she came over to me from the Ukraine by the Nash family. They made it for me. And they have been making witches' brooms for centuries. I mean, way back when, before the Inquisition, even, you know, before the witch trials. And um, I just really wanted them to make me one, and they did. Um, like I said, I haven't decorated her because I'm so afraid. <laughs> because once you put that stuff on there, I mean, I'm sure. You know, some witches will redecorate their broom or maybe um, dress it up for holidays or, you know, the solstices or whatever they choose to do. And that's fine. I just, I don't want to mess with her too much. I kind of like the way she is originally. And once I show her to you, you're going to see what I mean. She, she is a true broom. <laughs> so I don't want to mess her up. It's what I'm afraid of. I mean, I, I, you know, cleanse her monthly and um, I think I went over what the uh, wild witches, it's a reputation or let me rephrase that. A representation of sweeping out negative energy. Um, a lot of witches will have them, you know, propped up by their front door or they'll have them hanging above the door. Um, 
a, a lot of times, you know, whenever, before you do your rit rituals, you'll sweep, you'll sweep your area. So, and, and I know you can sweep it any way you want to, but the old traditional way is to do the figure eight. The infinity sign, you know, use your broom and do like that. That's the old traditional way. Like you can do it any way you want, but all right, I'm going to go get her, reveal her to you. Can you see her? And she's pretty long. Whoops. She's very plain, and her name's Elizabeth. So. I'm not going to say what kind of wood it's made out of because I just don't want to. <laughs> but she's beautiful, isn't she? Okay. Okay, I put her back up. She actually hangs on my wall. Um, they also sent made out of the same wood, some uh, brackets that I prop her up on. So, well, is does, does anybody have any questions? Is, or is there anybody here before I get started on sigils or sigils? Okay, well, I'll get started. Um, now, this does not have to be a hard thing. You can create your sigil the way most of us do, or sometimes I'll have, I'll have a sigil that comes in my head. It, it will kind of flash at me in my mind. And then I try to draw it, which once again, I'm not creative. I, I am not an artist. I don't draw very well. In fact, I can barely draw a box. But per se, uh, say your name's uh, Bob Wilson, okay? I just got a little pad here. Write your name out. Now, after you do that, you want to cross out your vowels, okay? So you're left with B, B, W, L, S, N, okay? Now, you take your, take your B, and you can do this any way you want to. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's your design, and you can, you can redo it over and over until it's something that, that you think you might want to use permanently. Uh, once again, a form that resonates with you. It's like, okay, that's it. You know, you can do that. Say you put your B down. You can make it as big or small. Like, just do your B. Your next B, you can put right beside it. Like that. Then your W, you can go above on each side or below it, however you want to do. I think I'll go on the bottom of it. Huh. Kind of looks like a butt, don't it? <laughs> it won't when I get done with it. Okay, now you got an L. Come right out beside the W if you want to. Okay. 
You got your L. Now an S. So, and if you want to, you can just put the S right in the middle of it all. I'm kind of a neat freak, so, and, and you, like I said, you can play with it, too. You can just keep redoing it. Um, we'll put... I'm going to put the S above here. See, I put the S above. <laughs> Hi, Cat. Glad you're here. Okay, now we have the N left. Let's see. Now, see, this is just a rough draft, and this may be what yours looks like at first. It's kind of sloppy right now, but you can rearrange them. You can put your B one on top the, on top of each other however you want to do it play with it and you'll you'll come up with something that you resonate with it may take you a while it may take you a few days you know um if you want this to be your personal sigil um which a lot of witches think that um they're really nice to have when you do your your spells um then you need one that that you want to keep that that resonates with you. So work on it, play with it. Um, did you hear me say, Cat? Uh, did you see the beginning? About marking out your vowels. Okay, okay. And you can use your personal name. If you have a witch name, you can use that. Whatever whatever you want to do. You know, if, if you resonate with storms or fire, you can use a, a fire sigil. Um, whatever you want to create. It, it's totally up to you. So. Oh, you got to see my broom. I usually don't show her. <laughs> What are you doing? Ah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just play around with it till you find one that, that you like, that you've created. And when you create them, it, it makes it even more special. It's more personal. So, I mean, I have one. I don't show it. Well, because I just don't want to. <laughs> but I have one in my witch name and my real name. So, Do you have a witch name? And that's an old tradition too. Witches would, you know, not say the real name in case, you know, somebody wanted to harm them or at one given point in time kill them. Um, they didn't know the real name. That's where that came from. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that, too. I mean, some people go by numerology. You have to, to match the name up with your uh, your real name and see if the numbers come out the same. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. Or you can just make up your own. Whatever 
as I said, resonates with you, whatever you feel closest to. I had a, a girl ask me or, or uh, respond to one of my videos when I read that message from Hecate. Cat is already nice and hard. Nah, I like cats. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. My great grandmother's name was Kitty and that was her real name. Her name was Kitty Cora. I think that's beautiful. You were talking about runes in the group earlier. Yeah, my daddy called me kitten too. Yeah. He said, I purred when I slept. <laughs> so he always called me kitten. I don't know. Maybe I'm half cat. <laughs> yeah, I made a late dinner tonight and, um, Still haven't done my dishes. I ran out of time. So I feel when I get off here. Not that I'm in any hurry. It's not like I have a whole lot to do. But you were talking about runes in the group earlier. Um, I don't really teach runes because I just don't use them. I mean, it's it's something interesting for me to look into and learn. As I said, you don't ever stop growing on this path. You're always learning. So, you know, I think that would be something good for me to do. And there's so many different types of rooms. And I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I think that those were, uh, well, no, I won't say that. I was going to say, I think that they're, Norse traditions to begin with, but I don't remember, so don't quote me. But yeah, I had a girl respond. Oh no, bummer. Okay. All right, sweetheart. Too bad. I think I'm going to start announcing these and giving people plenty of time. I don't know. Does anybody else have any questions? Because I really just wanted to show y'all my ladder in my broom. And a quick thing on the sigils. It's really that simple. Nobody else wants to say anything? Oh, I will say one thing about a video I watched earlier. I came across this witch that she sounded good at first, you know, but wow, she's talking about familiars in a completely different way than I have ever heard of. I've done a video on familiars. Um, as I said to me, they would be my spirit I'm working with. Um, 
or, you know, or my entity, my God or goddess. But wow, she, she had a whole different concept of it. And I was like, where did that come from? No, familiars are not demons that you have sex with. That's what I'm trying to explain to y'all. I don't know where she got that. I have never in my life heard of such a thing. You do not have to have sex with your familiars. I'm not going to say who it was. But let's just say I won't be watching her again. I watch a lot of witches just because it makes me feel good knowing that there's people out there like me. But some of them are way out there. <laughs> and I'm just not going to listen to it. It's like I have never heard such a thing before in my life. That is not what being a familiar is. Don't let nobody tell you that. Well, I guess you could if you wanted to. But it's not a necessity. And she made it sound like you have to have sex with them. I've been a witch all these years. I have never had sex with an entity. Just hadn't happened. <laughs> Nor did they demand it of me. You know, it, that's just ludicrous. Um, that's what I was saying in my last video. You'll hear so much stuff on this Internet. <laughs> I mean, some people may believe that way, and, and that's okay, but I don't want my followers believing that way because it's a bunch of shit, to be honest. So don't believe it. And, and you don't have to believe everything I say either. That's what I was saying. Use your own mind. You know, have your own sense to you. If it sounds really outrageous and stupid, it probably is. You know? And, and this path has a lot of different people, a lot of different paths, a lot of different ways of doing things. Um, it's branched off into, you know, separate categories. Um, just be careful. I can't stress that enough. You know, don't, I don't want you going down the, the wrong way or believing the wrong way. And I, I don't guess it really is a wrong way. But I try to teach, you know, or, or guide or share the old information and um, how, I, how I learned it. You know, I mean, nowadays there's more modern witchcraft and they're more lax in the things that they do. Um, me, I, I'm still very ritualistic. I still light all my candles and my altars usually lit up every night. You don't have to do that. It just makes me feel better, you know. So anytime you have any questions, just ask me. And I had a, a lady ask me the other day about associations with uh, associations with Hecate. And um, I've done a few videos on this, but you may not necessarily see an owl everywhere or dogs or keys or, you know, when she comes to you, you're going to know, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to feel her there. There should not be any doubt in your mind that, it, that it's her. So, you know, if, if you already feel it's her, it probably is. Yeah. And she will come to you when you least expect it to. So be prepared. <laughs> Just whenever she gets ready or she has the time. So. And one more thing while I'm thinking about it. I wanted to show you all a book. Um, I don't read much anymore because my eyes are, you know, old and getting bad. but And it gives me headaches. And once I get into a book, I don't put it down. But this book, I loved it. And it's fiction, but I guarantee you, if you get it, you, you will not be able to put it down. It's that interesting. Let me go get it.
Okay. I had to grab another one while I was in there too. This right here. And it's a thick, it's a big book. It's called A Secret History of Witches. And it's by Louisa Morgan. This is a story of about, it's at least five and possibly six generations of witches. And it is really a wonderful book. You would really, really enjoy it. I can't put it, I, I couldn't put it down once I started it. It took me two days to read this. That's all. <laughs> and I only stopped to sleep and eat or whatever. This one right here is an old book that's been rewritten or reprinted by Melissa West. And it's just simply witchcraft, a book of spell and potions. The thing is, this one is the old witchcraft. Um, wow, seems pretty weird that I opened to keep a wife or a husband. That's what I opened to. And a lot of their stuff is, um, you can tell it's very old. And it has a spell in here. Okay, basically, I'm not going to read the spell out because that's a copyright issue. But, I mean, you can get the book. But you basically spit on your partner, your husband or wife. You don't spit on them. You spit you spit on your fingers and you rub that saliva on their breasts and then you chant these words. Um, a lot of them still use a uh, tongue of a lizard. I firmly believe that the old spells, they called one thing because they didn't want people to know where their plants were or what they were actually using. I'm pretty sure they didn't just go out and kill a lizard, take its tongue or a newt and grab its eye. I think they were in reference to. Hey, Jen. You're so awesome. I love watching your videos. You liked my broom? Oh, well, now I'm, I'm, you'll, you'll receive this if you go back and watch the other part of the video, but I was, I know you like to read and I watched your video today about copyrights and, and this is the first time I've ever even showed books on my channel, but A Secret History of Witches is awesome by Louisa Morgan. You will not be able to put this book down. It's fiction. Well, it might or might not be in reality, but um, it's a story about about five or six generations of gypsy witches. And it's really interesting. And then I was showing the old book of magic spells and potions. Really good. I know that tore you up. I know that upset you. Made me sad to watch you cry. You're such a sweetheart. But I'm glad you got to see my broom. Or did you see it? Did you see it? I'll re-show her to you. I've still got her down off the wall. <laughs> I 
I smoke, I do whatever I want on my channel. <laughs> I'm crazy. But I'm glad you joined me, sweetheart. You're awesome. Blessed be. Okay, well, if anybody else doesn't have anything, questions or anything else that they want to talk about, I just thought I'd come on here and chat with y'all for a little while. Hecate's in here and I'm burning up. Literally. But yeah, uh, I, I am a firm believer in those old sayings and, and what they use as other references to certain herbs. So we may go into that further sometime, but if you get some of these older books, um, you can research them on Amazon. Um, sometimes even nowadays, libraries will have them. So. You know, you, you can you can figure them out or find them. I'll be right back. I'm going to go make sure my broom's OK. I'm really picky about where she sits. She's usually on the wall. Be right back. Okay, she's all good. Anyway, there's a lot of books you can use as references. Um, as Jen says on her channel, um, Scott Cunningham was an excellent writer. Um, very informative. As I said, I don't, I don't really have a whole lot of books anymore. Unfortunately, I just kind of do things on my own and, and with my own intuition. So um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I've always been that way. And if I do, I've learned from some of the older witches. And I've learned a lot from the younger witches. I mean, Jen, the taxidermy witch, she taught me something about boiling an egg today I didn't know about. <laughs> Put vinegar in it and it's easier to to uh, peel and the way my grandmother's cooked and all that I'm surprised I never heard that that's what I'm trying to stress you will learn every day in this path even an old witch like me um, you never stop learning and, and people have other ideas which keeps the craft interesting but be careful with different ideas and things that are completely off kilter. Because I'm telling you, I've heard some that were not so good. Um, and I would not recommend them. And I hate to come on here and say, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to put a damper on somebody else's craft. I'm just saying that some of it just makes no sense to me. And I would never use it in my craft. So, I mean, you do as you will, as you want, that that's what it's about. But if you're one of my followers, I wish you'd at least uh, maybe ask my guidance about it first. I mean, I'm not ever going to tell you, like I said, not to do something, but I don't want you. Well, I've explained all that. You just do whatever you want to do and you learn by your mistakes. But I'm trying to avoid 
you having those mistakes or regrets or getting into something that is not good for you at all. And I am by no means Wiccan. I am by no means white. I'm gray. Um, in fact, I I drummed up some stuff for a hex tonight. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I'm still thinking about it because I know that once I do that, it's done. And I have to keep all emotion out, um, anger, sadness, whatever. Um, and I've, I've pretty much decided against doing it. I'll just save it for another time. My herbs will save, but came pretty close. Um, the The last three months have been really bad on me. And um, I have another good friend that just went through something extremely horrible. I mean, I thought I was having um, a bad time, but my sister, she, oh, wow, it was really bad. And I'm, I'm not going to repeat what happened, but it was the ultimate horrible thing. And um, just letting you know, if you watch this, that I've lit candles for you every night, okay? Um, burned incense for you. Know that you're not by yourself. Okay. That's all I want you to know. And I, I'm not going to bug you about it. If you want to talk to me, you know how to find me. But, you know, and, and that's the thing about this path. You know, you have to stick together. Even if you don't agree with what a person says. Oh, well, you don't you don't agree with everybody, no matter what, witches or not. So I try really hard to let people have their own. Which is the way it's supposed to be. But as I said, some of it. I, I just I can't deal with so. Um, There's some of them on here I wish we'd just get off of here. Because, as I said, they make no sense to me. But it doesn't mean they wouldn't make sense to you. And if they do, that's fine. Believe how you want to believe. But the elder witches would tell you a, a totally different thing. But a lot of us are really set in our ways. Um, some I am and some I'm not. You know, some I'm, I'm really open for new suggestions but there are certain things that I do that I keep and I will always do I will always believe that way and nobody's going to change my mind <laughs> so and maybe that's how they feel you know they're they're very set on how they believe and that that's okay because that's what the past about figuring out uh who you are inside this is the biggest issue with witchcraft. It, it's it's not about your magic. Um, well, I guess it is. It, it It's the magic within yourself. As I said, doing shadow work. Wow. Sometimes that can be really hard on you. It'll, it'll take a lot of, uh, it'll bring a lot of things up. That in order for you to vibrate on a higher frequency to move on into your path, you have to face them. It could be something that you're, you you um, tamp down for ages. Some things you may not even remember now because you, you've pushed them back so far that you honestly, they're not in the, the front file of your mind. So. When you do the shadow work, and especially if you work with Hecate, she's going to bring all that up so you can be cleansed, so you can um, have room for better things, better thoughts, uh, a better life. 
you have to get rid of fears. You have to get rid of suppression, um, prejudice, whatever is going on in your body that makes it toxic is going to come out and it's got to be gotten rid of. And as I said, sometimes that is not easy. In fact, most of the time it's not easy. Not if you do it right. Not if you dig deep down and you see yourself, you look in that mirror and you go, okay, this is what you've been doing. I'm your best friend. So get rid of this, you know, so you'll have room for, for, for better things, for growth, um, a wonderful, happy life, you know, and whether you actually decide to stay on the path or not, um, some people don't, they get on this path and they say, Oh, that's not for me. And that's okay. You know, but the shadow work in itself, anybody can do, you know, um, you don't have to be a witch to sit and analyze yourself and face your fears. Hell, every psychiatrist, psychologist will tell you that. You have to know yourself, know what you're about, know what you want, um, what you don't want. Um, and I promise you, in the long run, you're going to think you're going through hell. You're going to get depressed. You may cry. You know, but I promise you in the long run, it is so much relief when all that comes out and it goes away. It's no longer poisoning you, you know, guilt. It, you may feel guilt. You, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you may be feeling, but you have got to get it out of you. Because everything that you feel in your body reacts in your mind. Your mind produces the magic. It's where your intent comes from. So if you've got a blockage, which, you know, you can do an unblocking spell on yourself. You can. I may show you all how to do that. It gives me an idea for another video. Um, you can do an unblocking spell. But what it takes, and you can go talk to a doctor. But what it really takes is you dealing with yourself. And a lot of times that is the hardest thing to do. It really is because we can, we're good at dealing with other people um, or helping other people. We don't turn direction on ourselves. So that becomes a whole new realm of, oh, wow. I didn't know I was this difficult. <laughs> and even with me, I'm sorry, my hair keeps getting caught on these brads in my chair. Um, even with me, you know, I, I thought I was pretty much organized. Um, that things were going okay. Uh, no, they weren't. So I had to do my shadow work. And wow, it took a it took a toll on me. It really did because it's like, oh my gosh, where did all that come from? You know, I, I didn't realize that I was functioning in that kind of a toxic situation. All the all that was in my body, and I don't even know how I survived. But now it's all come out, and with this full moon on August fifteenth, it is a beautiful time. Do some shadow work from now till then, okay? And then on that full moon, this is a peace moon. This is a time for forgiving yourself, for forgiving maybe some other person that 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 really did you wrong. Um, getting rid of anger. And as humans, we we cannot avoid those emotions. You know, that, that's just part of being human. But we can, however, not let them rule us. You know, 
we can say, I'm going to stop this right now. You know, I am not going to sit around and cry and frown all day. I am going to get up and keep moving. And it may be hard at first. I assure you, you know, um, but you have to be your own best friend. You, you have got to um, understand that in all honesty, there's nobody walking the face of this earth that can take better care of you than you. Not your best friend, not your mama, not your daddy, nobody. You have to do it. And with me, that was a very hard thing to grasp because I guess you could say I'm codependent in a lot of ways. I've been a nurse all my life. I'm uh, and a witch. You know, I've always been a helper, a healer. Um, and so when my world got messed up and I'm Virgo, <laughs> a neat freak, um, very organized, or I thought I was, um, so when my world gets turned upside down, my whole life goes to shit. Um, I, I can't function that way. Um, and, and it was even worse when I stopped working and uh, didn't have my clients anymore, my patients. Um, I had nobody to take care of. And for me, that is something that I have always had. There was always somebody that needed me. There was always somebody that depended on me, which made my self-worth feel better. And now I have to realize I'm worthy no matter what I'm doing. You know, and, and I know there's a lot of people out there that feel that way. They, they just feel like, you know, nobody gives a damn. And I felt that way. You know, I I've honestly felt I had no one to turn to and or nobody understood what I was going through, but I also knew nobody could fix it but me. So here we went. And uh, I learned a lot from that because even after all these years, I never actually went that deep. You know, so that's why I said, you know, shadow work can be hard on a video I had. You can tell that I am just not myself. And I'm still not back to 100%, but I will be, you know, and I'll, I'll be a better person for that experience. Um, and as witches, I think it's even more important to um, hold your tongue. It's always important to think before you act. And believe you me, I know it's hard. There, there's times, especially when anger is involved or be, betrayal or hurt, you think your first instinct is to lash out, you know. But Sometimes that, that's not the best emotion to have in that situation. Um, and I don't know if it comes with getting older or further in your path. Um, my realization, because as you progress, as I was talking about vibrations, you're gonna you're gonna be on a very high vibration level frequency. Okay. You've got these lower energies, and I'm not I'm not dissing anybody that's around you, but they have a lower vibration than you because they're not on the path, or they may be against your path. You know, they don't they don't believe in it, so they're they're dragging you down. Um, and what's sad about this, in all honesty, is that sometimes. You walk alone and I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying divorce your spouse or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if that person's vibration level does not come up to yours, 
there's going to be conflict because there's going to be no communication. You're up here, they're down here, and you won't have anything really to even talk about. Once you progress in this path, it, it and I'm not saying let it consume you, but we're always learning. I'm always doing something. And, you know, maybe that's one of the issues that I had with what happened to me here lately. You know, I, I um, disregarded other things that should have been important, too. And in reality, at the time, it just didn't matter to me because to me, what I was doing was more important. In the long run, for the, the good of the earth, for the good of my own soul, it was more important than than trivia, you know, stuff that that somebody else might have been thinking. It was trivial to me. And when all hell broke loose, I was like, okay, well, this is where the lower vibrations come in. You know, you, you have to understand that you cannot get mad. You, you can't lose your temper. Um, if you do that, it's going to automatically dump you down to their vibration. You don't want that. You worked way too hard to get to where you are. So stay at that level, remain calm and remember what you've learned that way. Um, you don't sink to that level. And I know it's hard. I wouldn't be telling you to do anything I have not already done. So forgive yourself. Um, keep learning. Try to help everybody when you can and, and just be the best which you can be. And none of us are perfect, you know, um, by no means. I'm sure not. <laughs> Shoot, I walk into the kitchen and forget what I'm doing. Or walk in the bedroom. What I come in here for? <laughs> but I know my craft. But anyway, I just want to throw that in there because um, I know some of y'all have been feeling maybe some of the things I've been feeling lately. And this this moon, and we've got we've actually got five planets dancing around together right now. Got Jupiter, Mercury, Venus. Uh, Uranus and um, Leo, the constellation Leo coming in. The Lions Gate is opening. In fact, tomorrow night will be the, the heaviest night. So you got the Lions Gate, which is opening. You can do your ritual tomorrow night. Um, go in there. Go to a whole different realm. Experience that. Um, then on the full moon, learn forgiveness. Because this is a perfect moon for it. That's what it's here for. Um, Hestia or Vesta, whichever you want to call her. Um, she's an asteroid flying around right now and between her the sun and the moon they've made a square so she is the goddess of the hearth she she's the goddess of the home fires and home meaning not just in your house your fireplace it, it means in here you know what keeps you going what 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 makes you it's your own personal fire and um so many things are resonating and, and and in July it was bad for a lot of us it really was I, I didn't realize that I wasn't the only one um, with everything that got opened up and thrown out but now with uh, the Lions Gate opening it's a time for healing it's a time and then the, the full moon on the 15th peace you know, um, forgiveness, be peace with your at peace with yourself. Um, I will come up with a, 
a ritual probably to show y'all for that full moon. I feel it's very important. Um, not only for me, because I need it as bad as anybody right now. But I, I know that a lot of other people have gone through this. So I think I should just show y'all some sort of ritual and I'll make it up. Um, I always do. The only problem is I'm on my computer all the time and I'm not doing it on my phone. I'll figure out a way. But the, the main the main uh, theme of this moon is peace, forgiveness. What whatever it takes to bring peace to your life, do it. Okay. All right, guys. I love y'all. Thanks for listening to me ramble. To my new subscribers, thank you very much. Um, you can hit the bell button at the bottom of your screen and it will notify you when I'm on live if you want to talk to me or ask me questions. Okay. Love y'all. Bye-bye.